to the other major story of the weekend. That was yesterday's mass shooting in and around Odessa, Texas. According to police, 36-year-old Seth Ator started firing after a routine traffic stop. NBC News' Miguel Almaguer is on the ground in Odessa with the latest on the investigation. Miguel, what do we know now? Hey, Steve, uh, good evening. This is where it all came to an end. Local police and the FBI are still here processing the crime scene. The theater behind me is where the suspect was killed by police in a shootout. Investigators have not yet released a motive, but two law enforcement officials do tell NBC News that the suspect was recently fired from his job before the rampage began. Oh, God, they're shooting right there. As gunfire oh, erupted, this was the scramble oh, to stay alive. Get out, get out, get out. Get out, get out, get out. Through the chaos and carnage, authorities hunting down a killer in West Texas. Their back windshield shot out. A gunman on a shooting spree, mowing down 29 victims seemingly at random, cutting a deadly path of terror through two cities and 10 miles of interstate. During the rampage, seven killed, 22 wounded, three law enforcement. Among the survivors, a 17-month-old baby shot in the face. Adam, that's okay. Hayden Carnegie called her dad as she huddled on the ground. Hayden's telling me, Daddy, I can see the gunman. I don't know if he's pointing this way or not. And on FaceTime, you're thinking, that's the last time I'm going to see my daughter. That's going to happen right in front of me. It all started with a routine traffic stop outside Midland. The gunman identified as Seth Ator immediately opening fire with an assault-style rifle as an officer approached his vehicle. After hijacking a mail truck, he began shooting at civilians all over Odessa. Oh, get down. He hit the barrier. Initially fearing multiple gunmen, law enforcement tracked the suspect to this movie theater and opened fire. What's going on? The 36-year-old killed during the gun battle. Authorities offering no motive, but saying they believe the theater may have been a possible target. Why go to the theater if you're not planning on entering the theater? The bloodshed comes just four weeks after the massacre at a Walmart in El Paso. With 22 killed there, tonight Texas is reeling again. Investigators are now pouring over the suspect's digital footprint as well as his recent job loss. Investigators say while so many people are still fighting for their lives tonight, it is a miracle more people were not killed during the rampage. Steve. All right, Miguel Almaguer, thank you for reporting. Appreciate that. And in the aftermath of yesterday's shooting, police talked about the frantic effort to stop the gunman. As is so often the case, there was confusion about whether there were multiple gunmen, as uh, Miguel was just reporting there, especially because in this case, the suspect changed cars. And hospital staff talked about how mass casualty preparation in the modern era is critical to being ready for an event like this one, both for themselves and Americans in general. Here is medical director for Odessa. Odessa, Texas, Dr. Sudeep Bose. When a situation like this happens, it's actions that come together from preparation years in advance. I encourage everyone in every community, no matter what size, if you're in the middle of the desert, you're in an urban area, to prepare in advance. Unfortunately, it may not be a matter of if, it may be a matter of when, and um, for us, this preparation really helped us today. So I would emphasize that this is not about the doctor, it's not about us, it's about the family, but um, myself personally, I'm an Iraq war veteran. I served 12 years in the military and served in the second battle of Fallujah and Baghdad, and this is something that unfortunately I'm very experienced at, mass casualty situations. And uh, this is what led us to form the preparation process with hundreds and hundreds of people that you are not seeing here that are very intricately involved in a situation like this. And joining me now is the man you just heard from in that clip, Dr. Sudeep Bose. Doctor, thank you for taking a few minutes. We appreciate it. Um, uh, maybe we just start on the, the victims who are still being cared for right now. Can you give us any update on how that is going? Um, we've finished the initial stabilization and they're scattered at different hospitals. So I think we should refer somewhere else for the detailed numbers. It's an hour to hour update for everybody. 
you were talking about in that clip we just played, uh, a lot of folks I think heard it yesterday in, in real time or saw it yesterday in real time, but the idea of preparation, the idea of uh, uh, this potentially being something, obviously we've seen it a number of times in recent years, it seems likely it'll happen more in the future. What kinds of preparation in, in particular do you think people should be doing here? This is such a key concept that I encourage every community in America to follow. I mean, we did this in West Texas, and honestly, it it ran like clockwork. It went so smoothly. It's about building a system. It's not about one doctor, one individual, one surgeon. It's it's about a system, and the system incorporates different players. Everyone from police who are initially involved to other community members and the paramedics. You know, I'm the medical director for the city of Odessa paramedics, so I personally have skin in the game for each and every paramedic. And all our ambulances were filled, every paramedic was out and about, and every single one lived up to their training. I didn't have to do anything. They were the heroes, the paramedics, the police department, the hospital staff that was there and called in. So this didn't just happen on accident. This is years of preparation. This is years and years of planning how to handle situations like this, who to call in, what resources you need, where the bottlenecks are. And this is doable. We can do this. You mentioned, too, in the, in the clip we just played yesterday, uh, your service in Iraq, the mass casualty situations you saw in that capacity. I, I don't know if you've had any time yet to process the last 24 or 36 hours, um, but seeing it in America, seeing it on the ground here, seeing it in the town you work, the city you work, has that impacted you any differently? You know, the concepts are the same, and what was amazing yesterday is how everybody just clicked into a mode to get the job done. Law enforcement, the frontline paramedics, and the hospital staff. So, you know, when you see this covered on the news, you may see, oh, wow, look at this, look at that. But everybody just gets into this mode, and you just flip to it, and you get the job done. And that's the same as the military, and it's the same here. But you have to do this by setting up a system ahead of time and preparing. And that means preparing at the basic level, even the viewers watching. I mean, do you know how to do CPR and chest compressions? Do you know what a stop the bleeding kit is? Do you know how to do these basic things if someone chokes or someone falls to the ground? And I think we as Americans can do this and we can be ready because those first few minutes always matter, even before help arrives. Aside from this, uh, this matter of uh, preparation you're talking about, uh, any other takeaways uh, you think anything else you want Americans to know in the wake uh, of this tragedy? I think the main thing is that you have to prepare in peacetime for wartime, and this applies to your personal life as well. What are the things can, that can hit? You know, in your community, it can be a missile, it can be a microbe, it can be a natural disaster. In your home, in your personal life, it can be something. So if you anticipate, you can be ready for this. And I'm amazed how a town in West Texas, in the middle of the desert, just ran flawlessly and we were able to handle this trauma. And I encourage everyone, every community in America to do this. We got this. All right, Dr. Sudi Bose, thank you very much. We appreciate you taking some time tonight.